Item cards are a great way to distribute classroom advantages and privileges to students. They're a lot of fun. They're a fun way compared to kind of other methods of Hi, I'm Jeremy. Welcome to Steampunk Power Ups, the show where we make awesome educational resources and experiences with a little bit of technology and creativity. Today we are talking character spreadsheets. This is a solution to a problem that we face here in this COVID-19 world, and that is that our classroom processes, our classroom ways of doing things need to be able to seamlessly float from digital to in-person work, and that's quite the challenge. Now, I personally run a gamified classroom. That means you use game mechanics, kind of overlaid your regular classroom stuff. And one of the things that is really common in gamification is item cards. And these are things that give privileges, but can also have in-game things like stealing points from other players, or it could be a privilege like going in, getting something from your backpack, right? There's these, these real world and these game type mechanics to them. But there's also things like badges, which has become a really popular thing lately, or um, or maybe uh, character levels and character points. And these are all things that, um, that maybe we typically track with a physical means, and we have this need to move to a digital one. So I've developed uh, a couple different spreadsheet systems here in order to try to address this. So today I'm gonna walk you through what my first generation was of this and then the system that I've actually landed on and that I'm going to use. And I'm gonna share all of that information with you in the description of this video. So here we go, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this spreadsheet here that I've got now, this is my first generation spreadsheet. This is the one that uh, I, I kind of developed and I was sharing it out on Twitter and I was chatting with other people in the gamification community and, and we're looking at it together. And this actually started with this, uh, this skills area here. I had several item cards that could be leveled up based on my students' math skills. I, I teach eighth grade math. And um, and I th and I didn't know how I was going to be able to have those cards still be able to come into play in the digital environment. So uh, what I figured was, well, if I make those into their character skills, their character act attributes, like on a D and D type character sheet, then uh, I could use those numbers in like a Google form or in a, a digital space more easily because I could get those numbers to add or subtract values right away. So I started developing this spreadsheet in order to do that. And then I remembered that I had seen uh, some other spreadsheets that had drop downs in them and that had images in them. And so I thought, oh, well, maybe I can do items too. And so from that, I've got this drop down sheet system here where you can assign items to students. And, uh, and you can mark the number of times you've used them or the number of uses you have. So my, my plan for this year is each item is going to have um, a one use per week start uh, and then they can upgrade them to get more uses. So um, this one here, your majesty's throne is for a, a comfy seat. So that'll start out as a one use when they get it and then uh, they can upgrade. So maybe now they're up to three uses and then I can mark here whenever they've used the card just like that. Um, I'm probably uh, going to have them uh, fill out a Google form to, to request when they want to play their cards. And I'll probably do that both in the digital and physical space um, because then I can say, go ahead and fill out that form and I can go through and I can record it later. Now, um, I've also added a place for badges. I don't even know if I'm going to use badges this year, but uh, that's available there as well. Um, and then I have a bunch of other data that uh, I thought we could include, like their gamer tag and gold and all of that. So this was kind of my rough draft, my generation one. And I realized that there's some issues here. Uh, in gamification, you kind of want to have a, a pseudo on an anonymity, which is great, right? It's, it's like a gamer tag. It's a way that you can identify a student without actually identifying them. So then you can place those names on leaderboards and all those different things. Um, but you still want to be able to 
use their name to know who they are when you're working with their data and working with their information too. Um, and so as I set, was thinking this through and I was like, well, okay, I can have their gamer tags, but if I have this as a view only sheet that the students can view, then um, I'm not going to be able to have their name on there anywhere. I could put it in a column that I would hide, but I'd have to unhide it and rehide it. And then also I was thinking it through and for four or five players, it's not too bad to click through between and, and click the drop down. But if we're talking 130 players or 180 players or 200 players, uh, that might be quite a few clicks that we need to do. Um, and let's say that I, I give an activity and there's a, an item that's a reward for it. If I need to go and give that reward to every single student and or maybe not even every single student. Let's say I had 30 students that actually did it of my 130. That's still 30 windows that I have to go through. Um, so effectively, I, I'm kind of like doubling the click, right? Because I've got to click and then give them the item. And so that's not quite ideal. Um, so, and, and the way this sheet worked, I've got a tutorial that's built in here and I'll share this one um, for you as well in, in, in the, uh, in the in the schematics down there but the way this works is with with two commands is with a vlookup um, and then with a data validation for drop downs now um i yeah i don't i don't think uh anyway i've talked a, a lot about the issues of the sheet and so this isn't the one that i'm actually going to use it's a good idea it was a good starting place but this generation version two is the one that i am planning on using this one is uh is very similar in appearance um but i've fully set it up so now um before those those places on this other sheet these were all kind of fake they didn't pull the data from anywhere now i've set this to pull from the data on the control panel that i use um, the control panel I use is one that was developed by Michael Matera. It's a, uh, a really, really awesome gamification database. I'm going to give you his information at the end of the video, but you're, you're really going to want to purchase that uh, gamification database if you want to make full advantage of the resources that I'm sharing with you here. It's a really good resource, and I've designed all of my resources to hook right up to it really easily. So the difference here that I've done is you see here, there's not any drop downs on this. And the reason for that is because I've set up all of the items, the gold, the XP, the levels, all of that um, comes from a single page for every single player. So now I don't have to click through every, you know, 30 pages. If I need to, to give an item to every player, I can just click through um, on this one page so i could go through just down this column and click 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 for the students that i that i need so let's say that player number two here was owed the feast all right let's eat in class i could go ahead and assign that feast to him and that would populate there i could give him one use he can use it once in the week with pop possibility to upgrade now also what i've done is i've made a single drop down here because this is the teacher view so you can click through on any player that you want so i just added an item to player two so let's see if that populated in here so let's see there's feast and it's looking it up and boom there it is okay so now whenever i add items here those will just populate in automatically also you noticed here like the gold, the level, the XP, all of that is getting pulled from Michael Matera's gamification database. And in the next video, I'll show you how to uh, set all of that up so that yours can do the same thing. Um, and I, I, I've left myself the possibility to use things or not use things. So like right here would be the field where the gold populates in, but I've blacked it out because uh, I'm, don't think at this time I'm using gold next year, but I might change. I might halfway through the year, I might add that mechanic. So I want to have that possibility built in. So I've got that built in there. So that's the equipment. I've also added a few different mechanics here. I've got um, this little box here that says avatar plays. So there's an idea that's been floating around uh, in the gamification community. Uh, community of buildings and the way that those work is to play your avatar 
Um, and so I've added this little box here to mark whether the avatar is in play or not in play. So it would just show up right there. Or if I wanted to denote that they are not in play, that could show up there. Or if you're not gonna have your avatar be able to, to be played, then you can just leave it as a little dot there, a little period, and it won't show up anything. It'll just be a blank field. Um, I've got up to nine items, eight items. Yeah, eight, eight items. Um, and then I've also added fields for pets, right? So I could add pets here. So um, I could do an egg or I could do a dragon. Truth be told, I don't know how these are going to be. Oops, I did that for the wrong player. I don't know how these are going to be used yet, but uh, I decided I wanted to have animals this year. So I was doing that. And so those things can populate in there. Um, so again, I've got the possibility, I've got the flexibility, and if I don't want to use it, I don't have to. Um, so let's see, I've talked about bad items, I've talked about uh, animals, I've talked about all of these other different pieces that populate automatically. Um, so up next, we can talk about badges. So you can see here that for uh, the next page over here, I've got a place where you can give badges. So I could give some badges to the students if they want. I'm pro I, I, again, I don't even think I'm using badges yet. These are badges from an old game and I just put that in there as a possibility. Um, I am thinking uh, that if I do badges, it'll probably be like uh, for, for completing the quest for the module. Okay, so that's an option there. And if you don't wanna use it, you don't have to. Um, the skills, the skills page, this pulls all off of a skills tracker that I've developed. And I'll show you that in a, in a couple minutes, but basically all of these fields up here will populate in here and these skill levels will show for each player as, as they show here. So basically the way this works is I've got, um, I had this, like I mentioned before, I've got the skills um, uh, program that my students are are working with, we're using uh, the math program IXL. And so students can work on their individual skills. And so I've got a skills tracker that I track their growth with. And the way that this is working is whatever their growth is, that translates to game value points. And as I track it on the tracker, it shows up on there as well. So this populates automatically, really it doesn't do anything. You could hide that page if you wanted to once you make a copy of this. Um, Next, this is the images page. Uh, when I was developing this, I actually um, shared out on Twitter uh, this this uh, the the first generation spreadsheet that I made, and um, and some different people played with it and did different things. And one person in particular named Fabian Hoffman made a uh, a an made a version of it and he made this really cool idea of of um, having the image populate based on a link with this little substitute code here. So I wanted to make sure to give him credit for that because that's a change that I did make for this one. I'll probably talk about that in the function video as well, but I wanted to mention it. So um, you can, pop, can paste the link to your image, like if it's a Google drawing, you can publish that to the web and then paste that in there and then it will display the image for each of those. So I've got the image link columns here um, for, for each of the things, for the avatars, for the, the pets, for all of those, and they populate in on each of those places. Um, so I've got those sample images put in there, and of course, just by changing out the links, you can put in a new image. So if I delete that there, that image will disappear because that link's no longer there. Um, if I wanted it to add another image, I could just paste it in there and it would just populate, show in, show up right there. Um, okay, so that's kind of the basics of the teacher version of this. Let me go ahead and jump over now to the skill tracker and to the student view because those are kind of the next important pieces. So the skill tracker here, this is my skill tracker. I developed this over a couple years actually. Um, so last year was, was the first year that we, well, actually, 
two years ago, we started using IXL. And last year we had this idea of these item cards that would upgrade. And so I made this tracker to help develop that. Um, all of this, uh, these names, this data is pulled from, again, Michael Matera's gamification database. You know, my copy was my student's information in there. And then the player numbers are pulled from the character sheet page. Um, and once you've populated those in there, uh, those all populate here into the skills tracker. And basically how this works is as your students grow, you can write their growth number in there. So like IXL has a math level between um, 100 to 1200, right? So it's like first to 12th grade level and their hundreds corresponding to it. So whatever their math skill is, whether it's numbers and operations or algebra and algebraic thinking or fractions or whatever those skill areas are, as they grow, you can input those numbers here. And then you can, uh, what this sheet will do is calculate automatically those those numbers um, and so what I've done here is I have set this up so that the the sheet will automatically read what the current level is right, it'll go to the end of the row and whatever values in there it'll mark that current level and it'll populate it in this box and then it does it with that little function there and then you input the starting level here and then what they do is the, the sheet will do a difference. It'll subtract these two cells. And then I did some sort of function operation to make that number smaller, to make it more like a D&D &D character number, right? So that um, those could be numbers that could be added in on a battle or, or whatever, or a, you know, whatever thing you want. If you want to sneak past a troll, right? Use your stealth, those sorts of things. Um, so the... The first one here, it just subtracts the two and it divides it by 20. The second one here, it subtracts these two cells and it divides it by 50. The reason I did that was because I wanted the uh, the numbers and operation co corresponds to defense and algebra and algebraic thinking it corresponds to attack. And I wanted the attack to be um, lower than the defense, that if you have a lot more defense than attack. So I just used a smaller number to divide it by. Most of the rest of these just divide by 50 and do a difference. Um, but you could change these to be whatever you want, right? You could have it be equal to any of these numbers. You could have it be any sort of function, op you know, any sort of actually not even a function operation, just a regular numeric, algebra, regular numeric um, arithmetic. There we go. Arithmetic operation, right? Add, subtract, multiply, divide um, that you want. And it will populate those numbers. So then what I've done here, just to help with the visual piece here, is each student has a chart that shows their growth. So here I was looking at player two, right? It shows their starting level, right? And then each of the checks and what they've grown to. Um, and then on the summary page here, this gives you, this is the readout of like the game data. So it, it modifies, it takes all of these, um, adjusted values here that are for the game and basically gets them ready to go back out to the regular character sheet. And from there, it populates to the skills page here, which then populates to the player page here. Um, something you can do with the skills tracker, maybe you're not a math teacher, maybe you don't have all of these different math areas that you have students working on in those skills. Instead, what you could do is you could change those. You could change them. Maybe you're a, a multiple subject teacher, so maybe you do have math in there, but maybe that's just one of those things. Maybe you want to have writing in there too, or maybe you want to have reading, or maybe you want to have their science work, or maybe you want to have their um, their history work, or maybe you want to have their... Um, I don't know, maybe their PE even, right? You could add all of those in instead and what it would do is it would change those to here and then you can track their growth. And that's what's nice. You could adjust these levels here because um, maybe it's different for each of these different numbers. So maybe those adjustments are different. And then it would populate over to your character sheet. It would populate whatever titles you put, math, writing, reading, science, history, PE, and you could um, correspond those to your different skills there. I don't actually want to do that though, so I'm going to go ahead and undo that, but I wanted to show you that that was a possibility at least. And there we go. 
All right. Okay, so then the last piece here is the student view of this. And this was kind of one of those areas where I was, was scratching my head a little bit at first because um, you want to be able to have all of the students view their sheets. And I, couldn't, I didn't really care if they could view other character sheets because that can be motivating to some students. And students can keep that information private if they want to because they can keep their player number to themselves. They can keep their avatar name their gamer tag to themselves right so they can choose they can hold back that information if they want but if they wanted to brag and show other kids oh look i've got a dragon i've got this item card they have that possibility and those students could go through and be like oh wow you do your player number whatever so the way i've set this up is similar to the skill version the i'm um, sorry for similar to the teacher view character sheet here um I've got this set up by player number, and basically all that the student needs to do, so we've been looking at player two a lot today, is click on the link for that player and it will take them to that page, and then it will show all of their stuff. So earlier on the character sheet, on the teacher view, I gave them the egg, the dragon, the feast, and these two badges, and those are showing up right there in the student view. So you could take the student view page, you could put it onto your um, your Google Classroom on your class website and your students would be able to um, see their stuff, right? Again, I've got the, all the fields in there and you can use whichever ones you want. I've got gold blocked out already because I'm not using gold, but you could just go through and change the font and that would show up. Um, if your students don't want to click through all 130 different options, they can just click the contents page here and it will take them back to the table of contents. So if they're like in the you know, middle of the pack, they're player 87, right? They don't have to scroll through all of that. They just go over, hit the contents link, boom, they're back to the beginning. There are some teacher information behind this that are hidden, um, and I'll talk about that in the, um, the setup video and the unboxing video for video two. Um, I don't know what happened. I deleted this again. Let's see if we can fix it. There we go, fixed it. Okay, so I think that's kind of the main rundown of some of the functionality here. Um, I showed you the different places for uses. Um, I've shown you all of those different things. So I think we're in a pretty good spot there showing how these different things would work. Now, like I said before, the way that I'm probably going to have students play their cards is just by filling out a Google form. If it's in class, I'll probably have them just verbally tell me as well and then have them fill out the form real quick. Probably be a pretty simple form, something like um, their player number and the item card they wanna play. And then I can rec go back and reconcile and mark those plays at the end of the day, um, but they can still verbally tell me in class and I can be like, yeah, go for it, fill out that form real quick. Um, and that kind of keeps the management piece down pretty easy for me. I just go through at the end of the day and I can see what's been played and I can mark those adjustments. And if it's multiple players, that'll all be populated on one form. So I could do a little split screen and go through, mark the uses for the cards that they've done. Okay, he's at two uses, he's used one use for the week now. And this is really easy to go through and reset at the end of the week too. I can just go down each column and click back their uses back to zero. Um, and it's really smooth and easy that way. So hopefully this is a really um, useful resource for you guys. I'm going to put the links to all three of these in the description for the character sheet, the skills tractor, tracker, and the student view version of this. In the next video, I'll show you how to link all of these together. And you know we'll make our, our educational games, you know, COVID proof together. So then let's go ahead and talk about the last things here. And that is for, um, for me, for my um, last couple things. So first off, uh, part two of the video is an unboxing video. I show you how to set everything up, get things linked together. Like I said, this all really runs connected as like an add on to Michael Matera's gamification database. So you're going to want to go to his website and get that downloaded and follow him on Twitter too. He's got lots of good resources at Mr. Matera. Um, also, I mentioned Fabian Hoffman made a version of this and he's got a podcast called Finding Our Tribe. So give him a follow, listen to that podcast. It's really entertaining. It's really fun. And, um, you know, I, I 
you know, used one of the functions he came up with. So he's a good member of that gamification team to be after. Part three of this video is also uh, in the works and that's gonna show all the functions that link all these sheets together, how they all work so that if you wanna make some modifications or if you need to fix something, you're able to do that. And of course, if you wanna follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Cedarquist. So if you would do me the honor and the favor of liking, commenting, and subscribing, that would be of great help to me. Until next time, go make something awesome.